So Mike, could you tell us, how did you start writing for young audiences? Uh, I, I chose a teacher and decided my interest really was in theatre and education. And uh, I, I joined the Leeds Playhouse Theatre and Education Company and stayed there for nearly 10 years devising plays for Leeds schools. Um, and I, did, I didn't realise I was learning about writing. It was partly because we would keep, because there wasn't a big turnover in the company in those days, and we would keep things in repertoire for a long time. So one of the plays we did, we did 150 times. And I remember Annalyn and I, one of the actresses in it, walking down the corridor saying, you know that line? I don't think we need, I don't think we need it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so actually we were always working the text. Mm -hmm. And just because of the group that was there, we, and because it was very actor-based, we were always cutting. We were always seeing if we could do in less and less text, actually. After I left there, after a couple of years of, of being an actor in these, I started working between jobs with local theatre companies, helping them to devise pieces. And that turned into writing quite, quite quickly, really, just because we never had much time, they never had much money, and, uh, and the company, blah, 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 that I was working with, would, would try to book the tour and build the set, and they had a cleaning job at the dance centre, so it fell to me to write a play. And, uh, so that's how it began. I always have been fascinated by childhood and children, you know, and that really goes back to my own childhood. In fact, I think most children's writers, you will find something in their childhood that um, gives you the key to that. I think for me, there were a couple of keys, and one was my mum had a breakdown when I was very young which kind of is the sort of thing that puts you in a, a looking as well as experiencing sort of a place. Mm -hmm. And also, I came from a very working class background in Plastic and Plus and went to the grammar school, which made me another kind of slight outsider. And I kind of feel like those slight fissures in your life, you know, it wasn't that I didn't have a happy childhood, I did, but a couple of things clicked to make me find the process of children and childhood fascinating. In terms of craft, is there any distinction or differences that you can identify between writing for a young audience and writing for an adult audience? Um, I get a bit scared if somebody says to me, we want you to write what you want to write, you know, because I kind of think everything about theatre is collaboration and conversation, and the fundamental one is the one with the audience. I did this play called The Gardener, and the gardener is a relationship between a young child and an old man in a garden. And they're both struggling with the same thing in that they, the, the young child has uh, got a younger sister just born and feels excluded from the house. And the house actually belongs to his grandmother who is the younger sister of the old man he encounters in the garden who feels like there's no place for him in the house. You know, so that's why he gets in the garden. The old man has Alzheimer's and is forgetting things. And the young child is quite young and is building up memories. Um, so there are already kind of two plays around the same issue, really, which is to do with you know, your relationship with your sibling, really, at different stages of your life, the beginning of it and the end of it. Um, I, and it sounded on paper like a great idea, and it what turned out to be a great idea, but I got very stuck in the middle because I thought, there's no truthful, good way out of this story of this old man. Alzheimer's, there's no cure, you can slow it down, you can care for the person, but the person will need a lot of help, and, uh, and, the, and the end is, is death. And I'm doing this piece for basically a young audience. And I kind of ground totally to a halt. I thought, there, there's, a, there's a play there for, for adults, but I can't find a play for the children. Um, in, in the end, I realised the play for the children is actually in the sibling relationship, and the passing on of what the older 
character has to the younger character, mm -hmm. and um, and it and it's done within a set of imagery of, of you know of, of a series of seasons. So it's accepted that this is a natural um, process. But definitely, I ended up very consciously thinking there's a play for adults here, and there's a play for young children, but they're coexisting on, on the same stage. And that's the closest I can get to the difference, you know? Mm -hmm. You can talk about anything with anybody, but you would have a different conversation about it with three-year-olds than you would with a 40-year-old. Mm -hmm. When I first started writing for very young children, and certainly a lot of the work that I would go around seeing then was primary colours and go, 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 and get them moving, maybe get them actively involved. And for, so for me in those days, not so much now, but I felt the necessity to kind of slow the whole thing down. Really, really take it very slowly so you kind of, you know, it's like smoothing the water so you can see. So the kids, are, you're pulling them into a much more meditative place. So it's something to do with the relationship, but not so much, we'd say that with the, um, with the content, you know, I kind of feel like I've, I've yet to come across content that, um, that I wouldn't deal with. So Mike, what, what do you think are the key considerations in the craft of writing for young audiences that you need to sort of take on board? Um, and I suppose extending that, what is it that do you want to offer young audiences and what do you want them to take away from their experience of seeing one of your plays? In the sense that I want them to be engaged with the big issues of, of life. Um, it's very easy, a lot of people say oh, don't talk down to children. But I think it's easier said than done, actually. In terms of the craft, yeah. I think, sit down with whatever story you're telling, whether it comes from real life, or like I do a lot of stuff with fairy stories. I don't always do a straight telling of them. Um, but I think you need to sit down and think, what's the journey, you know, what's the, the myth level of, of, of the piece, craft-wise, in terms of actually what you see on the stage, I think you have to put only what is necessary there, that really you want the play to live inside your audience individually. Mm -hmm. So generally, I'm, I'm not a big realist naturalist, mm -hmm. you know, I would say craft-wise, do as little as you possibly can. It's almost home, home, homeopathy, I think, with Gibbs, to actually provoke the picture that you want. Yeah, in terms of working as a writer in, in this field, I'm almost hesitant to say this because I don't want to put people off. Uh -huh. But I think. Don't, don't do it unless you really think, you know, you've got something to say to either that child in the room, that group of children, or about the person that you want to. I must have written about, well, I, all, all told I've written a hundred plus plays. And I must have been up to about play number 30 before I got a review in the Guardian. So I made a living, mm -hmm. but, you know, it was, for a long time, it was not glamorous. You just have to be interested in it, you know. But if you are, the rewards are fantastic. You get to play with form, you get to play with, you get to work with, with directors, actors, designers, who really think out of the box, you know. And certainly international there's some incredibly exciting work over there. Companies who work with children consistently commission new work and have done all through the bad hard times. It's not an option for them to stick on an Alan Aborn or a, you know, yet another Romeo and Juliet. 
it just isn't. They have to create new repertoire and, and engage with the world all, that we are all living in. It's, fun. it's, it's fantastic. It was, the most exciting part of theatre when I went into it. And I think it still is really, though it's taken such a handling.